Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Henderson. I'm with uh, Penn State Extension and uh, I'm from Pennsylvania. Do you have any other Pennsylvanians here with me today? Good. Okay, good. And uh, so who do we have from Ohio? Because I know we have some questions there. Okay, okay, good. And then I'm assuming the rest are either West Virginia or undecided. <laughs> All right, okay. That's uh, over by two. Okay, that's over. That's over. Okay, so we have a, a great program tonight, and uh, but definitely you can see by the turnout in this room, a lot of interest in what we're going to discuss this evening, and um, hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, no, we're going to go over a lot of information, we're going to pass on a lot of information, and we're going to take time to answer your questions as we go forward, and have time at the end as well as access to all of us, and uh, uh, you know, to answer your individual questions as needed. Uh, we do have a lot of handouts uh, that were passed around, and I just want to make sure that most of you grab some of the, especially the key ones. Um, if you could open this, this stone, okay, you, you got the folder as you walked in, which should have the uh, couple copies of the royalty check. Uh, the main one we're going to cover this evening would be the stone energy one, uh, the one in, that one right there. Uh, so that's, the other one is a sample of another operator, just to give you an idea that yeah, everybody, every check is different. This is Stone Energy, which I know some of you have here, some of you may not. Uh, but we're going to focus the, uh, the bulk of the presentation when Steve comes up here on going over and analyzing that check there. Uh, again, some of you have different operators or multiple operators understood, uh, but the concepts are, are the same and translate from check to check. So uh, some of the other handouts you uh, had as you came in, there's a survey. Uh, that you should have received, and I'd ask you to complete those. That does help us out as well as uh, West Virginia Extension uh, for future programming, and uh, you know we do value that feedback. So if you could fill those out as well and just leave those on the way out, we would definitely appreciate that, or leave them on the table. We'll pick that up. Uh, some other, uh, what else we got? Uh, we have some other guides up here, Landowner's Guide to Leasing. I know it says Pennsylvania, but uh, there's a lot of similarities across the, uh, the you know, different states here in the, in the basin. So, uh, you know, if you're into that, you know, if you're leasing or have no people looking to lease again, there'd be some good ideas uh, in there as you work through that process or maybe a recap a little bit about what you went through. So, and then uh, uh, Karen's PowerPoint is also in there as well. So, uh, she'll be coming up here in a few minutes to go over, uh, you know, more of a localized flavor to West Virginia, what's happening here. So, yeah. So again, I'd um, like to thank everybody for being here, and uh, I'm going to go over real quick what we're going to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to give a, uh, a big picture of development, uh, pace of development, and some of the trends that we see going on, and how that does and can impact your, your, the royalty stream. You know, impact the production, impact the price. Uh, you know, so as we go deeper into tonight, you're going to find out there's a lot of different factors that can impact you know, how much royalties you can receive, you know, it's not just, you know, how many wells are drilling, it's, you know, the price, the production, you know, the markets out there, where's it being sold, so uh, a lot of different factors out there. So I'm going to talk about some of those on the big picture, and, um, and then Karen's going to come up, Karen Cox is here with uh, West Virginia Extension, and she's going to give you more of a localized flavor and uh, talk about the, the DEP site, so Always what we encourage you is you have your checks and there's a lot of questions sometimes, well how do I know it is what it's supposed to be? So this uh, should walk through going through the DEP site so you can download the data, compare it to what you're getting and you know, hopefully it's somewhat close but it may uh, put up some flags so you have to contact the operators or uh, you know, some of the other presenters up here as well to, uh, to get that corrected. So. I'm going to finish up when I'm done, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, we developed a royalty calculator. Uh, it's something that we've done through Pennsylvania, and it's more unique and it's specific to the basin. And I will admit it is specific to Pennsylvania right now because we have a lot more data points within Pennsylvania. But as I go through that, it is um, applicable to Ohio and West Virginia. And as we get more of those wells online and more production, we're going to plug those in there too. And that helps you a little bit with your planning and projections, depending on, you know, so you can see. Yeah, what could I get, or what's the future hold with uh, you know these different variables? I'll show you. You can change the price, change the percentage, and uh, you know how many wells you have too. So then we're going to come up. Uh, Steve Carabin, who will uh, be in the room here shortly, uh, he's going to come up. He's from the Rhino Group, and he's going to analyze this check for you. And he's going to go over that in a lot of detail, and hopefully answer a lot of the questions you have as you go. So. Um, we do have a Q&A period set up for at the end, but as we go forward, if there's something, you know, you need that answered right then, 
you know, feel free to put your hand up and you know, we'll try to address that as we go. So uh, you know, make sure that it's covered for you. So. Uh, and then when we're done, uh, when uh, Steve is done, then we're going to have our uh, sponsors and our hosts here are going to come up and talk about some of the legal, uh, you know, the royalties and some legal issues surrounding those. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the clauses within your leases and, you know, some of the uh, other points that they're following and some stuff that they see, uh, you know, which is uh, of interest to you and some stuff you should keep an eye on moving forward. Uh, so what I'm going to do actually, uh, you know, first again, like the thank our sponsors here and uh, the hosts for this evening. And I'm going to turn it over to Dan for a couple minutes if you want to just introduce uh, all the other partners and the other hosts. Yeah, sure. Right. Uh, my name is Dan Guida from Guida Law Offices in Weirton, West Virginia. Uh, along with uh, two other or three other firms, we are co-hosting this event. Uh, John Turak from Gold Courier and Turak is here. And then from Rokiski and Associates, Dave Wilharm, Chris Blair, Jeff Rokiski, Ryan Rokiski. And then from Barry, Kessler, Crutchfield, and Taylor, and Gordon, uh, Eric Gordon's over there, Steve Taylor, and Adam. Uh, so, as Matt indicated, we're going to speak at the appropriate time about legal issues and royalties. Okay. Thank you. So, just one uh, a point there, uh, you know, what our role is, what extension role is, and I say this for Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio, is we provide information, and, uh, you know, tonight's a good example, educational information. So, when you have questions about, hey, my lease says this and I'm getting this. You know, we're not the ones who are gonna answer that question. We may try to help you and steer you, but you know, these are the guys over here who are the ones you have to go to to try to get those answers for. So yeah, and that's why they're here, you know, that their expertise and uh, to help you walk through some of those potential issues you may run into. So but again, so I'm gonna jump in, we're gonna talk about some uh, you know, some of the global issues here we see and uh, bring it a little more localized then as I turn it over to Karen. Um, I bring this up there because, you know, and you may say, well, I don't care, we're, we're in Wheeling, West Virginia, but all of these other shale plays out here, and, you know, I have a couple of the big ones circled, they do impact, you know, how fast or how much uh, royalties and what the production may be uh, for your particular uh, land out there. Uh, the companies have a lot of opportunities to go, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, Pennsylvania, you know, we've just gone through an election here in PA in Ohio. And uh, operators have a decision to make, and you know they can't move uh, from you know from where you're at, from your backyard, to any place across the country out there. And, and so I bring this up just so you know and you're aware, you know, because a lot of questions we do get is it slows down, and you know it's slowed down, and they're, they've gone away, they're not coming back. Not necessarily, you know, they're moving away because they have that opportunity to drill. Uh, you know, in the Eagle Ford or in the Bakken or Niobrara and get oil and liquids, which is worth a lot more money to them than, you know, what they're getting in this market maybe, or some of the dry gas or even with some of the liquids out there. So I throw that up there, you know, again, there are opportunities and there are also threats to how fast and what this pace of development may take place out there. Again, on the global market, I always like to put this in there, you know, you look at the global market, this, uh, this revolution really has taken place and this Appalachian Basin has sparked the international revolution out there. There's a tremendous amount of oil and gas out there and, and you start to hear the discussion about exporting in the United States when we always talk about importing. So um, yeah, this, is, this is big news really in what's going on in this region and in this area. Um, stuff that we deal with on a, on a daily basis, you know, we have a lot of these uh, uh, countries coming to Pennsylvania, to Ohio, West Virginia, asking how is it being done here and how can this be done in our homeland? So, uh, a transition with that with a quick question. Who we have up there? Okay. We got Putin up there who never smiles. Okay, he always looks that way. And then who's this guy over here? Saudi. Right, the Saudi prince. They're a little bit worried about what's going on right now here in the United States because you know, the United States is moving up and you know, we're the top uh, gas and we'll be the top oil producing country um, in the world. And um, who's paying a little bit less at the pump right now for gas? Okay, It's because what's going on here? I mean, you see the price of oil dropping because again, in the US, we are producing more oil than we ever have in, in, in decades. And it's because of you know, this shale revolution, because of the drilling and the fracking and then pulling this uh, oil out, this tight, uh, you know, the tight oil. So you know, these guys definitely are worried. You know, and I bring Putin up there because you know, they, they're concerned because they have a stranglehold on Eastern Europe. So I mean, they're charging you know, enormous prices for oil and gas in that market. So they are concerned definitely what is happening here locally. So 
This map here is going to uh, circulate a few times, and this is looking at, it shows about 12,000 wells, this is through June, that have been drilled in the Appalachian Basin. So as these cycle through here, you kind of get the pace of development, you see where the swath is, and then this is more recent here, you see where this developed here, and development in the last couple years has taken place. And so it gives you a feel for where this development has moved. If you look in, you know, in Pennsylvania, we were really focused in the northeast and then the southwest, and then the last couple years, we have seen a shift shift down here into the, uh, you know, the panhandle there with uh, you know, West Virginia, Ohio. Now, there, there's a lot, I would say, and, and Karen will talk about West Virginia DEP, there's getting data from there once in a while is, is tough. So, I mean, there's more wells being drilled in West Virginia than showing up on there. Uh, but you get a feel for where this is migrating to, and especially if you're in Ohio, you see how this has really come from a pretty wide area, and it's really being focused on a few counties out there right now. And I'll put my disclaimer that these dots are not the size. I apologize if you're in one of those counties, because uh, uh, you see Bradford County, or a little north of me, looks like it's completely covered. There's about 1,000 wells in there. Uh, but I can tell you, it's still pretty, uh, pretty rural up there, a lot of farmland. So. so what's going on in the, uh, the pace of development? Um, you know, from a, a, a development uh, place, uh, Marcellus is definitely more of a mature play. It's in the production phase. Uh, for the most part, you're still seeing some of the boundaries tested out there. Uh, but for the most part, the operators know where they're going to drill, and they have a pretty good idea uh, of what their pace of development is. And you see that with the, uh, you know, as you see more of the pipeline development being put into place, uh, some of the midstream, you know, the additional midstream work out there as well. So, uh, you know, that big land grab, that big leasing activity, for the most part, has slowed down. Uh, you are starting to see, as we're in about the fifth or sixth year, you're starting to see some of those leases being renewed or coming up for renewal, but not, of course, not anywhere near the, the pace it was five or six years ago. Again, I you know, mentioned Marcellus, but Utica is really in that exploration phase. And that's to say a word of caution that it's, you know, you've got hundreds of wells versus thousands of wells as we do in the Marcellus. So they're still learning, still poking the holes out there and finding where is the valuable uh, land going to be and where, where we get enough gas, enough liquids, enough oil to make it worthwhile out there. So one of the big things is not probably you're aware of it, uh, is this constraints and transmission, you know, getting the gas to market. Uh, you know, that's a big thing. Uh, you know, we, there's an enormous amount of gas out there that's come out of these wells in, uh, you know, in this basin, but the issue is where can it go? You know, the Northeast U.S. is, you know, a big market, you know, 25, 30 percent of the total market, but we don't have enough pipeline to get it there. You know, if you remember the polar vortex last year in New England's there, I mean, we're going to see that again this year because there's still no, there's no new pipelines going there. There's no new capacity to get the gas to market out there. So, so that is a big issue. So even though they're drilling a lot of these wells and the pace, you know, the pace is pretty steady out there, they need to get the gas to market and they're running to that issue where they don't have enough capacity or they don't have enough pipelines in place. And that's going to be a lot of this development. You're seeing a lot of development in that midstream um, you know, projected you know, $10 billion a year for the next decade out there. So, uh, uh, you yeah, know, that is a big issue out there. You know, getting the gas to market, and if we get it to market, how are we going to use that gas out there? Because, uh, and I'll talk about exporting here in a minute. So, again, storage. Storage is an issue. Uh, last winter, we pulled a lot of gas out of storage. You know, so just to give you a quick uh, how storage works, October through March, typically, uh, in the United States, we're taking more gas out of storage, where these underground wells or caverns and um, we're using more gas in this time of the year. And last year with that gold snap, we pulled an enormous amount of gas out of the storage. And what you're seeing here, this blue line here, that's how much gas was in storage. And if you can see on here, um, because we came out in the spring, we were pretty low. So that's why you started seeing the upward pressure in price that it's going up because of supply and demand. We're going into the summer, or to the winter months, lower than we were last year. So if we have a real tough winter, we're going to see that pressure, that price going back up out there. And you see production pick up as well to try to get more gas and storage out there. So you know, this is a, uh, let's say an impact of uh, a price. You know, there's a direct correlation to where the price goes as we come out uh, you know, from December on through March out there. If we have a cold winter and some of these polar vortexes snap through here, uh, that use an enormous amount of gas. Uh, some of the other uh, trends out there, you're seeing oil uh, being pulled out, oil and then some of the liquids. But the, again, oil is really what um, is, is driving some of these production and some of these plays out there now because uh, you know, these operators are, um, you know, can make a lot more money 
with that same rig that can drill for oil or drill for gas, but we have the same issue with oil, is what are we gonna do with it? And how are you gonna get it to market out there? And most of it now is actually being uh, moved, or a lot of it being moved by uh, rail, because uh, you don't have the pipelines in place out there. So that's something that you continue to see in the news. And with that, you can see this tremendous increase in, in uh, movement, you know, how many car loads, You've had some issues out there with some overturns, some accidents, uh, which brings up the safety aspect out there as well, and that can slow down or change the pace of production as well. So moving forward here through uh, you know some of the other developments out there, you know tech technology definitely is driving this. Um, you know you have uh, several operators I know we work with and talk with. They say they're really a technology company who drills. So you're seeing this change. Uh, you're seeing where companies out there are using more sand in the completions. The technology is improving, improving every you know every six months. You see a turn, and you see it get better out there. And basically, what they're trying to do is you know get more of that product out. You know they can get ten or fifteen percent of the gas out, maybe five percent of the oil. And you know if you're leaving that much down there, for you as landowners, you know well that's a lot of money left in underground. So as those technologies improve, they're able to pull more of the gas, more of the oil out. Then it, of course translates to more um, you know more royalties into your pocket. Out. Uh, so some of the other stuff going on out there, technology, these stack play uh, issues where you have several shale plays, Marcellus and then Utica. We have some of the upper Devonian shale plays as well. So some operators and several of you guys in here, I'm sure, will have some wells uh, or some pads on your property that will be able to drill in two or three different formations out there. And what this is doing is increasing the longevity of how long this will take place and, and how much, again, also increasing the production out there as well. Uh, so what we saw, and I'm from central Pennsylvania, and uh, about two years ago, a little over two years ago, everybody left, they said, and went here to uh, Ohio, West Virginia, and they did. There was a big movement because of this focus on liquids. And uh, Steve's going to talk more about what these liquids are, but these liquids are value-add. You can drill and get gas for 3 or $4 a unit, or you can get these liquids, uh, ethane, butane, Propane, you know, and you get eight dollars, nine dollars a unit out there. So it's supply or economics. So the operators are moving down here, and they're going to continue to look at that and continue to drill in those areas where they can get that higher rate of return based on getting liquids or some oil out of it in this area too. And now the other part of it is, what are we going to do with this? You know, so not only you know, first we had all this extra gas, we saw the price drop, but now we have all these extra liquids out there. What are we going to do? So you hear some discussion about these ethane crackers. There's about four or five of those on the books that are moving forward very, you know, slowly in this region. If those do move forward, you know, three, four, five years from now, you're looking at a, a you know, tremendous growth in this northeast. And it's really comparing or northeast is competing with the Gulf Coast out there. So uh, that's something to come in the future. But that's definitely going to impact you because you see, um, you know, ethane is a big liquid that they get out. And we're going to, you know, Steve will talk about that on the check. Ethane has dropped in price, you know, to a quarter of what it was because there's no market out there. But if we have these crackers and these facilities in this region, you will see that price go back up. And that's a big component of the royalty checks and the royalty streams out there. So, you know, again, it's three, four, five years down the road, but a lot of opportunities out there. So some of the other areas of technologies out there is utilization. Uh, there's a big focus on, again, how can we use this resource domestically? You're seeing a push in uh, the vehicle transportation. Does anybody have a CNG or LNG vehicle in here? Yeah, no? Oh, I see one hand coming up back there. Okay, so that's moving forward, obviously very slowly because it's the chicken or the egg. Well, there's no stations out there. So the station owners say, we'll build the cars and we'll build the stations and stay, you know, vice versa. So it is moving forward slowly out there and the economics are driving it. You know, you can pay um, you know, $1.50, this is a little low, but $1.50 for CNG or three fifty dollars for natural gas or you know what diesel's at out there. So. Again, trying to use more of it out there. Um, you know, some of these other areas, you're seeing power generation, you're seeing multiple power plants now being, uh, being built. Um, some has to do with the economics, some has to do with some of the regulations in place or coming forward in place with coal and so forth. But, uh, so you're starting to slowly see this move forward where you can use more natural gas out there. Who likes to talk politics, especially this week? <laughs> okay, so policy, again, policy definitely can drive the development. I think, has anybody from New York or had New York property here? No? Okay. What's going on in New York? You know, absolutely nothing. You know, sixth year of the moratorium up there. So, you know, policy definitely can dictate how the pace of development will take place. Um, you know, New York has seen nothing and probably won't see anything for a couple more years. 
uh, you know, until the presidential election out there. So, you know, you have a lot of potential gas up there, but uh, not a lot of interest in anybody uh, from the politics. The question is, if you leased in New York, say, six years ago, and your lease is expiring now, uh, what's going to happen with that? And I'm going to turn that to the legal, because you, you have different, I don't know if anybody deals with New York up there, uh, but you have a couple different thoughts on that, what's going to happen, what has happened. I believe what happened there was, uh, the issue was, because there's a moratorium, does that put a pause on the lease, uh, or does it continue to run? And uh, there was an agreement reached with the New York Attorney General who said, and, and Chesapeake uh, agreed that their leases would continue on, and, um, and, and so they would run their course despite the board for it. Yeah, and you've had some big operators actually go bankrupt up there because of that, you know, putting a lot of money into that. So. Okay, so some other policies. Uh, I talked a little bit about, you know, federal policies. Um, you have seen, actually, the federal administration turn their, you know, kind of do a 180. Uh, came out a couple years ago, wasn't very favorable of the, of the hydraulic fracturing and shale development, but you're seeing more favorable of, let's move this forward. So, you know, the concern early on was there's going to be a lot of uh, new regulations. You know, so new regulations, increased cost of doing business. What's that mean to, to us locally out there? So, uh, you know, again, we, we think from the federal level, it seems to be uh, more uh, favorable or at least uh, uh, able to tolerate it and, and still moving forward out there. From a state level, like I mentioned, Pennsylvania, we just went through an election and uh, the Governor Corbett, a uh, Republican, what the incumbent lost. And uh, uh, incumbent Governor uh, uh, Tom Wolf is um, he's supportive of the industry, but he's going to tax it, he says. And you don't know what, you know what tax it's going to be, but there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And basically what that means, I, you know, from my perspective, is he's going to tax it a lot. You're going to see movement again to Ohio and West Virginia. You know, there's more favorable tax structure out there. Ohio, a little bit. You hear the governor talk about increasing the tax a little bit. Uh, West Virginia, you know, the tax is moving forward. Uh, you know, where it's at, so there's more certainty. You know what you're going to pay. Um, so again, from a Pennsylvania perspective, there's a lot of unknowns out there. So the next couple of months are really going to tell how's the industry going to move forward, and uh, you know, will we see a slowdown? And those rigs will move, and they may move again across the border here to West Virginia to Ohio. I'll walk through some of these uh, quickly, but there's a lot of discussion now about exporting uh, natural gas uh, because we are set up here. We are now basically neutral in terms of we produce enough natural gas uh, that we use on an annual basis in the United States. Uh, we do import some from Canada just based on you know some pipeline issues, uh, but we are at a point now. What are we going to do with this gas? You know, it's not like we. Uh, you know, we've already shut off the spigot of all the importing that we've been doing, so we've turned that into domestic use. So now the question has come up, should we export this? And it's, you know, you can get into a long discussion about the, polit the politics of it, or is it, you know, the patriotic side of it? You know, this is domestic, we should use it here. Uh, but uh, it's moving forward, moving forward slowly. Uh, again, this is a long process. You know, this is a, you know, you're talking billions of dollars of investments in years to turn these uh, plants around or build these new plants. But in time, as those do move forward, you will see some more of that, um, uh, that utilization of it. So increasing, you know, we have an outlet for the natural gas. So you will see, you know, maybe somewhat of a uh, uh, price stabilization or slight price increasing, depending how much is going to be exported out there. Uh, we are exporting a lot more right now through pipeline. Uh, Texas, you know, we used to get Texas gas up here. Their, their market now, a lot of it's going to Mexico. So Mexico's increasing how much they're using on a you know, pretty, pretty steady basis, pretty hefty basis out there. So again, you're seeing some of this move across the borders. It's just exporting it you know, via LNG, uh, liquefied natural gas is moving forward really slow. So again, what's going on, kind of the future of the development? Uh, you know, the focus again is on using this. Um, you know, how can we use more as a, as a country? Can we export it? Um, you know, the technology is gonna continue to improve. You know, so sometimes you might think, well, they didn't drill in, in my backyard, they only drilled one well, they're gonna come back and drill five more. Well, you know, the pace it's going with the technology increase, uh, you know, probably in two to five years, or you know, two years if they come back, that technology is better. They're gonna be able to get more gas or more of the oil and liquids out of that well than they could if they drilled it nowadays. So it's not always such a bad thing as, uh, you know, if you're waiting for them to come back. Uh, so you see some of these other things we talked about out there. So, uh, you know, that manufacturing,
manufacturing renaissance, uh, that's if we get these ethane crackers in the area, you know, are we going to be ready for that too? So, um, yeah, that's a big topic out there. And if these announcements are, uh, you know, they break ground on those, that's a big impact for the, this region. It's not just the state. I know there's, you know, competition out there. You want in PA, Ohio, West Virginia. It's going to benefit this entire region out here. Tremendous amount of jobs uh, to build these facilities, you know, 10,000 jobs, and then the downstream, these facilities, the chemical industry, the petrochemical industry to support that. A lot of great high paying jobs uh, for the long run out there. Okay, so I'm going to uh, shift gears real quick here, and I just wanted to walk through. We have uh, mentioned a, a royalty calculator. Uh, well, this is something that we actually just launched here about uh, two weeks ago. And um, this is looking at specific to what's going on in the basin, uh, the Appalachian Basin. The, the points in here are the data sets are from Pennsylvania, again, because we have uh, more data points in PA and we're focused on Pennsylvania. Um, but we have a couple in the websites here at the end. Uh, but what we are doing and what we have it for and what would be of interest to you in, in Ohio or West Virginia would be this one, the all PA counties, because this is taking into account I think about 7,000 wells across in Pennsylvania and looking at their production. So when you extrapolate that to the basin, I think you get some good examples or some, some pretty good numbers based on where you're at out there. So um, what this does and what this allows you to do is punch in a bunch of different uh, figures out there. What's your royalty rate? Um, you know, what's the price of natural gas or the average price of natural gas, which you, know, you can look at your old checks, so there's a lot of estimates out there. Uh, and then you can look at what your, you know, what the drilling site unit is, and how many acres you have. You know, so if you have, in this case, you have 250 acres. There's a thousand acres in the unit, and there's going to be five wells on there. You see what the math comes down to, and it's looking at what the uh, the average production is on these 7,000 wells, and um, you know it gives you an idea of uh, as I jump forward here, you know what these uh, these royalty payments are going to be you know, based off of all of those parameters that you can put in there. And you can play with it and put a whole bunch of different figures in there as well. So I just wanted to point this out to you, um, just looking at the decline curve. Uh, I apologize, I lied. Ah, I took out the slide with the website on there, I apologize. But it's uh, uh, extension, uh, ex let me get it, extension.psu.edu. And um, if you go into the natural gas section out there, You'll be able to see the, the link to this and download it. Um, the, the county or the statewide one, there's no charge for. We are uh, some of the countywide and some of the more specific ones, there's a small fee. But for what you would want and what you want to look at, at least get an idea or a rough estimate out there, uh, the state one, I think, uh, would fill in there and fit in for what you're looking for out there. So I encourage you again to take a look at it just to help uh, you know, you know, give you some ideas. And again, it's just estimates, of course, based on uh, you know, what the production has been over the last several years here in PA. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a good ballpark. And we came up with this because a lot of the other ones out there, uh, calculators are based off of what's going on in elsewhere, what's going on in Texas or, uh, you know, North Dakota maybe or some of these other states. It wasn't specific to the production we were seeing here. So we, you know, we found this to be pretty, uh, you know, more accurate from what we're seeing. Yes. Question? Yes. The website, uh, the website, let me make sure I got it right here. I should know my own uh, website. Um, yeah, the, the easiest one, go to, I'm sorry, naturalgas.psu.edu. And you'll see a link of uh, link to it right at the top of the page or on the side of the page. So naturalgas.psu.edu.